So uh, first of all, I would like to welcome Nemat Frem, CEO of Indefco Group and Chairman of Industrial Association of Lebanon. The Lebanese economy grew 8.5% in 2008 and a revised 9% in 2009 despite the global recession. What are the fundamentals behind this growth and uh, what can we see in the future? Uh, let's talk about uh, what happened in the last two, three years and the fundamental of growth. I believe that the stability in Lebanon, the political stability, was the most important factor. Because we believe that Lebanon has suffered in the last maybe 10 or 15 years of a failed start. Every, every time we were coming close to a real start of economy, we had some unstable factors that had to slow down uh, our startup. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that last two years we had we didn't have those adverse conditions, which helped really the economy to start. So I believe that, uh, first of all, those accumulated years of slow, low, very slow growth uh, were the most important factor of this big jump. Uh, two, we had this financial stability in the market, which was a fantastic thing when you compare to what was happening in the world. And uh, this was a major factor also, I would say. Uh, thirdly, the Lebanese by themselves are known to be very entrepreneur, as you know, uh, very dynamic. And uh, again, it is this uh, issue of stability, this issue of uh, Lebanon being able to attract back its expatriates and its uh, key executives that were really spending their golden years outside Lebanon, outside the economy of Lebanon, they had the chance to come back and do this quantum leap. And I think this is only the start. This is really only the start. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the growth is decreasing. So if it is start, uh, then what can we expect from the future? Uh, look, I believe, first of all, that uh, 2011 will be a good year so far. If it continues like this, I expect that we will reach beyond 8% growth. So uh, it's very interesting. It's an optimistic prediction. It, it is very interesting that to wait and see together. But this is for sure, mm -hmm. counting that, co counting the co considering that the stability will stay. Hmm? We, we hope for a peaceful year. Um, and if this happens, we will have this 8% growth. I believe that the factor for we are reaching a point where the system is starting because probably two years from now we will have we'll hit real bottlenecks in the infrastructure in Lebanon, which will really will hinder more growth. Okay, so today uh, there is room for another good year. Maybe another, maybe there is room for another second good year so, or third good year, but beyond this, the infrastructure will have to be revisited in Lebanon. And is the, is the government doing enough to address this issue of, uh, we've heard a lot that they're not uh, very participative in uh, developing, mm -hmm. they're trying to come up with the PPP partnership exactly. schemes. Mm -hmm. So what, is, uh, what, what do you make of all of this? Look, I think that in Lebanon we see the problem, but it's not enough to see the problem in Lebanon. <laughs> the problem is to take the corrective actions. And uh, it has always been very hard because we are steering by a, by a, a co by committees, and when you steer in by committees, you don't take the right decision fast enough. Now, uh, will we do? Will we take this bold decisions for the PPP? Because I agree with you, the PPP is the right uh, environment for the infrastructure uh, investment. Um, I think it will, we will. It will take a lot, maybe some more time. I cannot predict, but uh, there is no way out. There is no way out but to use the private sector to modernize our infrastructure. It, is, it makes sense for everybody, for the private sector, for the public sector, and for the investors coming to Lebanon.
Uh, what is your assessment of the industrial development in Lebanon and how competitive is its industry compared to your neighbors, such as Syria, Jordan? Mm -hmm. Look, uh, in the last five years, Lebanon industry was able to grow around 20% a year, which is a very interesting factor. Now again, why did this happen? And I believe f the first most single most important factor in this is the euro-dollar parity. I believe that Lebanon is a, was a major and is always a major importer from euro-based countries. And once euro, the euro became that high, uh, we, we, we observed a kind of uh, replacement of imports by local production. So this is one. Two, our export grew also 20%, which means that, which meant that in the last five years, because of this factor, we were able to penetrate new markets or compete with European goods in Africa or in Arab countries, uh, even in Europe itself, even in Europe itself. I believe that um, Lebanon industry has a niche. We have the right, we have a value proposition, which is working quite well. Uh, again, the infrastructure will and is today creating major bottlenecks for the industry in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. I think we have reached a point where all, our, all the investments that were done in the industry, in the industrial sector in the last 10 years, and there were some investments done because of a very bright and uh, intelligent decision of our central bank to subsidize industrial investment. Um, and this gave very interesting fruits, and we are harvesting mm -hmm. on those, the last three, four years, we are harvesting years mm -hmm. for those investments. Where, where do you see Lebanese uh, industry uh, competitive in which niches? What, what is your competitive Look, advantage and what, what is your specialization? Our real comparative advantage in Lebanon is the human element. I believe that the Lebanese factor itself is our comparative advantage. And what is the Lebanese factor? I consider that the Lebanese factor is those young Lebanese who are coming from very good school in Lebanon, who are trilingual, who have multicultural disciplines and uh, lived in a multicultural environment, and leaves for at a young age, let's say around 19, 20, to go for uh, higher education and grow and develop outside Lebanon, and then come and bring with them their expertise back to Lebanon. So this factor itself is, is playing double role. First, is providing Lebanon with very talented uh, key executives, uh, management, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, specialized people. Plus, it's helping us to develop a route to market uh, outside Lebanon for our, our export. Um, this is really our comparative advantage. And uh, I believe if we know how, always how to position ourselves and have the right value proposition in our products, there is a niche for the Lebanese product. So made in Lebanon is somehow, and is today, and can be more a, a label for a, a, a high quality product or a, a product which is a high quality within reach product. Mm -hmm. Uh, DEFCO Group is a privately owned multinational group of 51 manufacturing plants, industrial and commercial enterprises, employing over 7,500 people worldwide. Uh, can you share with us your success stories and how did you, how did you make it to this point? Uh, first of all, DEFCO has was started uh, 60 years ago, and today we are at our second generation. And uh, the success comes from the fact that. We believed long time ago, and the founders believed long time ago, that the key, the key component for success is the human element. So we believe in Lebanon, we, we believe in the DEFCO, that uh, the, our human capital is the most important capital of the DEFCO group. And uh, this is why our people are very much empowered. Uh, we believed in a system whereby uh, small is beautiful, so we had autonomous companies evolving on their own with a very interesting 
linkage uh, with central with central uh, headquarter yet with a free uh, with enough freedom for entrepreneurship to excel uh, and this is what happened really mm-hmm. plus the fact that we have been focused i believe that uh, focus is one of the most important success factor for industries or any any group of companies mm-hmm. uh, we focused on our business we never we never and, and get out got out for instance we did it, we never diversified to go to different sectors so we are in industry but at the same time you are creating many new companies and many new entities so how do you yes. manage the the, Look, the, the balance uh, between these two let me tell you first of all we make those companies we are only focused on four sectors and those sectors have synergy with each, within each other so we are in the packaging in the flexible packaging we are in the corrugated cartons we are in the paper making and we are in the uh, consumer goods tissue and disposables of co- consumer goods mm-hmm. so these are the four sectors now first of all there is a synergy between them plus uh, uh, the fact that we have been evolving in, in environments and in markets that themselves have been growing in the last 30 or 40 years so can you imagine being in saudi arabia for instance making packaging products in the 50s and just think of the market growth since since then or uh, being in in africa today uh, or northern africa and being in the baby diapers and the feminine napkins and uh, seeing what sort of behavior patterns change in, in those countries uh, same goes for tissue consumption mm-hmm. which was we have been operating in environments where we had astronomical tissue consumption group we would like to be to help international uh, business sector to re- rethink of lebanon as a, a, the place the gate for uh, for a the trillion dollar economy of the middle east and the gcc countries we believe that lebanon can play this role again as it used to play in the 60s Uh, we believe that uh, the multinationals should be based in Lebanon. Their headquarters should be based in Lebanon. When you come to think of, uh, for, of, of Lebanon, the advantage of Lebanon for its, uh, for its uh, environment, for the right uh, staff availability, and the right uh, high-profiled executives that you can find in Lebanon uh, without having to expatriate them to other countries in the area. Uh, I think the cost, the savings are, are tremendous in this, is, in this respect. This is why I really invite the multinationals uh, to come back and have their headquarters in Lebanon.